Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. We are in the middle of Halloween horror months or spooky months, depending on who you ask here. My name is Jake Goldman, and I am joined, I am joined as always. You're a little nervous today. No, Somebody I'm, spooked today. I'm I think. a little spooky. J- Jake My had to do it. got haunted. Jake had to do a second take to start the podcast. He didn't I, get his I, clap right. I didn't right. get my clap right. And it's probably because of how haunted the story we're about to talk about is. Either way, that voice you hear is Rob Fox. How's it going today, Rob? Uh, it's going good. It's going good. Yeah. Braves are up 2-0 in the NLCS. Ask me about that in a week. Oh, I hate sports. We yeah. don't talk about sports on no, here. No, it's sports. baseball season, not football season. It's spooky season. Anyway, Dan, yeah. what's up with you? Dan Register, the other guy that we talked to. Dude, I'm just excited for this topic. We're going back-to-back 1920s Germany. Yes. Uh, apparently, we're touching on a subject that Iconoblast is also covering today. <laughs> Not like in depth. In de- they did like a 10 minute segment. We have a full episode. Yeah. So we need to get this audio out before their video launches. So that's, that's kind of crazy that like topic cuck cu- them. That's kind of crazy. That like that hasn't come out yet because I like, obviously I, w- I wouldn't have covered this if I knew they were talking about it, but it's too late. I did my search. Yeah. So sorry, Coop. Can't Coop is switching it. today. We always no appreciate that. Thank you, Coop. If you want to hear less about this topic, check out Iconoblast's new episode dropping very soon. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, uh, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, is the Hinter Kaifek murders. Okay. So in, uh, on the evening of March 31st, 1922, on a remote farm in Bavaria, just 70 kilometers north of Munich, six members of the Hinter Kaifek family would be murdered in cold blood. Oh, there's not, a name. We're not fucking around today. Yeah. We're getting no, no small talk. Wait, wait, I can't talk about college football. Obviously we, none of us can talk about college football because none of our, I don't want it to. Go yeah. Braves! Our team sucks. Baseball. Our teams are all bad. <laughs> baseball, baby. Baseball. Is that your whole life? Like, yeah. yeah, probably. Sports? For you. For you. Me? Yeah. No, I... You're in like a depressing state. Me? At this point. <laughs> what? What did I do? I mean, last week, fucking Jesse called you out for... For being dumb. The dumbest person on the show. She... Yeah, somehow but, pinned your bit on you know, me. I don't understand how that happened. It's all relative. Like if you call someone the dumbest person in the laboratory, it's, and you know, now they're still working in a laboratory. Unless it's the janitor walking. You've in. been on kind of a downward That's, spiral since. Uh, like like things aren't going well at home. Um, things are going fine at home. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, your your dog ran away. My that, dog didn't uh, run away. <laughs> that you know of now. I gotta call my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, is my dog home? <laughs> it's the dog home. <laughs> no. Um, speaking of dogs, though. My dog's doing great. Big yeah, Daddy Dan that trained him. Yeah, that was yeah. the dog Big Daddy we were Dan speaking of. Yeah. Was that dog. Yeah. Uh, he's doing good. I uh, watched some sports. Haven't been, been lifting, work. clearly. I have not been lifting. I um, bought all my weights, and just they're just collecting dust. Uh, I'm Rogers going to right eventually now. sell them back to you when you need Dude, them. Dude, the whole point of yeah. working out is to show off for other people, pretty much. So home why not? gym makes no sense, actually. No, no. What you do is you... You put the gym in your garage. I just always leave your garage door open. Like leave Actually, it open. It's, perf- sev- it's perfect weather for that. Yeah, right leave now. it open several hours a day so the people, your neighbors and shit, can see that you own a home gym, and then they just think you work out, and that accomplishes most of what actually working out accomplishes, which is other people knowing that you work out. Right. Yes, it's true. I mean, even though, like, when you go to the gym, you think everyone's looking at you. You think you're putting on the show. Mm. You're just front and center, but really, no one's paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I was, was actually in your own head. You're I was like, talking to uh, I was talking to noted other podcaster David Ruff about uh, yeah. gym TikTok the other day. Okay, uh, just that with noted other podcaster David Ruff. I, I was too. I uh, I had a beer with him on Wednesday of last week, but uh, we were talking about it, and it's like I think he showed me a clip or something like that that you had sent him about a guy just like pretending to struggle with 225, and then when someone goes over to help him, like he just starts knocking out the reps, and it's like God, gym humor. Like, the guys that actually lift really hard aren't funny. They can't do humor. No, like a Bradley Martin type. I don't know what that means. He's an awful person. Yeah. Nah, he sucks. Uh, No, um, I always get hit up. Probably the most requests I get these days is to bring back Substock with you. 
But I mean, the way the physical state you're in right now, I clearly can't do that. Why would you not? Okay, here's here's for the fans. If you want Substog, the only way I'll do it is if Dan has to transform me. I'll train you. Dan has to come over to my house five times a week. The Danny Regs method? Yeah. And uh, what is that? Like, I have to drink a gallon of water and a gallon of milk? We do 100 squats? We eat raw meat. (laughs) Raw meat? Okay. Just raw meat diet. Whatever. Eat raw beef. They serve that in restaurants. It's a fancy appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, it's not raw ground. Normally, it's like raw wagyu. Raw turkey (laughs) ground. (laughs) Raw raw fowl. Raw fowl via Dan Regis. Dan will show up to my house with a warm Ziploc bag of raw beef. We looked really heavy until you hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, And then you focus on other parts of your body mm -hmm. until that part heals. And you shift the pain to another part of your body. Right. And that's just your life now. Dan Dan is going to be like a 70-year-old that just can't move. I'm going to be 50 year old in a wheelchair. It's pretty generous. I'm looking so hot. Pretty generous. So you have you, you have 70. to build uh, Dan's method is to acquire enough mass so that when his body gives out on him, it'll take until he dies for it to atrophy into nothing. I'm trying to get yeah. enough mass that I have my own gravitational pull. Yes. Yes. I mean, you're just going to be obese eventually. Like I you're going to be a fat old man. I did that. I know, oh. but you're going to be like a for fat 6 old months. Man. Yeah. For 6 months I thought I was yoked and I was 230 pounds of just Beef cake, yo boy. Yeah. Beef cake. I was doughy. I mean, there's a lot of TFM videos that I'm glad they deleted. <laughs> boy, howdy, did I not look great. Speaking of deleted TFM stuff, um, they also deleted the episode you brought me back on after I got fired. And I was like, yeah, so I'm fired. Uh, what, Substog? Yeah, I did one Christ. episode where I had been fired. And I was like, well, I'll do one no, more. No, we did it at my house. I, yeah. I deleted it because... Um, did they ask you to? Because I'm sure they did. It was depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it, was like, like, it was super depressing. It was like, I don't have a job. I don't I was know what like, to do. I was yeah. like, uh, yeah, let's let's just get rid of that episode. Yeah, that's not a sad. That was a pretty sad episode. Nothing good happened on it. Three men, four firings. You know what episode's still on YouTube, though, is the episode I came back, where Rob got fired from TFM, and mm. then I got rehired <laughs> yeah. and replaced him on the t- Inside yes. TFM podcast. I, I do remember that. I believe it was called Enter Dan, man. And actually... Probably good episode. It was a pretty good episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you go good. back and listen to it. Um, when we got Jared on it after Rob was fired and Jared was on it full time, it actually wasn't bad. Jared held his own. Inside TFM, that podcast? Yeah, we, used to, uh, we did a bunch of bits, and I remember we had Dylan on one episode, and we convinced <laughs> him that we would say the Pledge of Allegiance every episode. Well, enough. you did this because you knew he was bad at his job. And wasn't wasn't actually paying attention. Not to say anyone's good or bad at their job. No, no that's we were just saying literally we, was the point of the bit because you knew he wasn't paying attention to the content he was supposed to be managing. We knew that he didn't listen. Yes. So we just yes, we created a bunch of bits this, that we uh, were like, yo, we, we do this every week. Yeah. We created the hey you fucking. I think was one of them. Jersey boys. J- hey you fucking. Hey you fucking. Oh hey, hey, you fucking. Hey, oh, you you fucking, fucking hey. Oh yeah, we did that. Yeah. We made him. We convinced him that we said the, the Pledge, Pledge of, of Allegiance every episode. And um, there's one more thing. We also yeah. made. We also like were very insistent that he needed to stand while we did it. Yeah, too. while we did the, and take his hat off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. take your hat off. But the entire point of that bit was <laughs> to call him out for not doing his job. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the, I wish so, the like, video. Not, I'm not even trying to be. I'm not even the one that came up with that. Like I, I'm explaining <laughs> what the bit is. Uh, <laughs> I didn't come up with a concept. We of didn't. That. We didn't have as much subtext as explained in that one, but. Um, yeah, either way, that was very fun. And if the video still exists, I implore anyone to go watch it because the look on Dylan's face is fucking hilarious. He's just like, what the fuck is happening? Like, yeah. This is this is our number one podcast. This is what's going on. Yep. It's like, yeah. Yeah. How would he know? The inmates are running the asylum here. But speaking of crazy shit, I'm going to go back to my topic if that's okay with you guys. I mean, if you really want to, I guess. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about murder in sure. Germany. Yeah, interestingly enough, there is a murder that uh, was not solved. A couple murders. So... Six, I believe you said. Six. How many kids? Just, get to, just get to the part that makes two me horny. Two kids. Two kids. Cool. So uh, this also, is, can oh, wait, we so just was it a weird family, like a weird old timey family where like there were just too many adults living in one house? Oh, of course it was. Yeah. yeah. Can we just also bring up the point? This is exactly the same time that Peter Curtin, our topic last week with uh, Jesse I, Wiseman, so I was tr- around. I tried to look up if there was any connection any to connection? that. Not Connect really. Connect the dots. Yeah. Um, he was in more of a nor- northern part of Germany, I believe. I mean, He had- was in like Dusseldorf, right? Yeah, there's no way he could have traveled there. I mean, <laughs> no. Uh, Dusseldorf is... So this took place at about 70 kilometers north of Munich. Too far. I mean, too far for that, man. Dude, Dusseldorf is like extremely far from Munich. 
Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, let's do a podcast on uh, where places are in Germany. Well, this okay. So gr- glad you asked. <laughs> Dusseldorf. <laughs> no, it's 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 incredibly far. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, so either way, this took place seventy kilometers north of. Um, by Munich. the way, this is just life at the time. Yeah, serial killers everywhere. People fucking animals all the time. Sure, we don't have any animal fucking that we know of in this case. Uh, yeah, but I mean, happened on a farm. It happened on a farm. And here's the thing that we know of, right? So it's just happening in the background. Like he's walking through the countryside, and somewhere in a, behind a barn wall, something that's not a human is getting fucked by a human. Yeah, if anything, likely. Yeah. If you're keeping like houses at that time were just for hiding shame from God. Yeah, yeah. The roof is to protect you from God's vision, and yes. that's where you can do all the terrible things. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, this is largely considered uh, the most gruesome cold case in German history. We're coming up on the hundredth year anniversary of it. No one has been caught. Really, because they haven't caught all the SS guards. So I feel like there's some worse cold cases. Well, if I, if I had to pick, well, one a cold case <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stir that pot. <laughs> I like that a bunch of people yeah. after that. That's at least good. We have a sense of humor here. Yeah, Not in the reviews. <laughs> no, no. People without senses of humor live in the comment like, section. Like and review. <laughs> like and, re- like and if review If you have podcast. a comment on Jake's Holocaust denial joke, please leave a comment in the thing. In the review section. On iTunes. Yeah. yeah whatever. Just anyway. rate it five stars, please. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the victims that were murdered include the following people. Andreas Gruber, who was 63. Uh, Kazila, Kazilia Gruber, who was 72, uh, Andreas' wife. Old, old. Look, they're, if we were talking about these people in terms of COVID, we wouldn't even care. We'd be like, whatever, they're over 50, they're dead. Okay. There's their widowed daughter, Victoria Gabriel, who was 35, and Victoria's two children. Oh, well, she was too old to remarry anyway. Yeah, what does what she have to do with her life left? Who's going to marry a 35-year-old German girl in the 20s? Well, some people fuck them, and then we're going to get to that. Okay. Uh, Kazilia was her seven-year-old daughter, and Yosef was her two-year-old son. Kazilia, if you didn't notice, has the same name as her grandmother, Kazilia Gruber. So that will get a little confusing, and I will specify the daughter when I'm okay. referring to Victoria's say daughter. old Kazilia, young Kazilia. Well, she wasn't young. She was 35. No, no. See, that's where we're going to get in trouble. Oh, Victoria, it's the granddaughter. The granddaughter, Five. Kazilia, seven. Okay, old so, Kazilia, young Kazilia. Yeah, and then Yosef, to the youngest of the... Gruber, Gabriel Clan. He was two years old. Also in the mix was the maid, Maria Baumgartner. She was 44 at the time. She got off, too? She was also off. Well, that other chick was just saved from a life of being a maid. So, Oh, and how well was that done? Because... Rob, I'll get to why that's a great comment in a minute. Well, we know six people died a gruesome and possibly psychologically tormenting fate on that cold evening almost 100 years ago. The leads for this case spanned over 100 individuals, thousands of hours of meticulous research, and exactly zero convictions. Yeah, No one has been convicted for this case. That makes sense, because what what year is this again? 1922. Yeah, so remember the Peter Curtin episode literally last week where there are like 900,000 suspects? Yeah. Yeah. Because it could be anyone. Well, here's the... Yeah. What, what was the, the was it the coup, the Veselia axe murders or whatever the like famous axe murders where like some guy in like 1910 just some fucking hobo or who knows just walked into a house murdered five people like a whole fucking family with an axe and then just fucking left. Yeah, this is the German they, version. Of yeah, that. and they never caught him, and there was no way you ever could catch him because yeah. if there's not a cop sleeping outside the home. As it's happening. As it's happening. And he stops the person. Okay. Yeah. You say, you say that, but there's a suspect in here, which I think we might all agree did it. Yeah. You well, know? You know. Yeah. He's still at large. In Maybe. The gr- in the ground somewhere. Yeah. He's well, probably dead. Um, but anyway, either way, it's so not immortal is what you're saying. That we know of. Yeah. Mm. Tonight, we will be discussing the circumstances leading up to the murders, theories regarding the identity of the possible killer or killers as well as some of the more horrifying details surrounding the Hinterkaifeck family themselves. While all these conditions make for an excellent Halloween Horror Month episode, what makes it even more particularly apt is how our story starts. Comedically? No. Because we're funny? and then no. and, and, this and, is a comedy podcast? And then it's funny that they died? No, uh, I was referring how it's apt for Halloween Horror Months. It starts with a haunting. Oh, so there's a ghost. There is a ghost what why'd the ghost show up because he knew he was gonna have new friends pretty soon 
<laughs> so I'm just getting the place warmed up. <laughs> or like ectoplasm so over here. That's good. They're gonna like that. Could mm. have been like a turf war I situation. A, I don't know what's a low country a South, South Carolinian, Carolinian yeah. but like just that is he gay? I don't know of what That's South mm, Carolina. Bow jangles. Yeah. I just want a bow biscuit yeah. minus the biscuit if you catch my drift. No but jangle sauce for me. <laughs> I'll have a blueberry biscuit. Anyway. And that's not a gay impression. That's a South Carolina that's South impression. South Carolina. It's it's also uh it's Seth it's a, Galifianakis, yeah. if you ever want to do that. It accent. is, yeah. yeah uh, it's, it's spot on. It's uh, like, that's why it's, well, maybe Lindsey Graham is actually gay. I don't <laughs> know. But like, it's always funny to me that people just basically assume it because of his voice. And I'm like, no. It's actually just how like, everyone. Maybe, yeah. Like maybe he is or isn't gay. I don't know. But the voice, you don't know anything about South Carolina if you're judging it off the voice. Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like it's so, it, they just have voices like little, uh, like flamboyant. Like country flutes. They're just fancy. That's why they're well, fancy boys. I really, really, and Dan was gonna give me shit. He's like, "Oh, the one that you like wrote or whatever." But I really, one of my favorite spare bedroom sketches was Todd Chrisley's condom ad. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm one. Todd, well, Cri- you didn't write that. It was just an ad lib. Yeah, yeah. You just did it on the spot. Yeah, which I appreciate it. Yeah. We should yeah. have done more of that instead of rehearsing yeah. and writing. Probably. I'm yeah. Todd Chrisley for straight sex. Hey, if Trojan you want straight sex condoms, <laughs> is that anywhere? Can anyone get you spare can bedroom? Purchase spare bedroom on Apple. It's still can on you? Apple. It's still for purchase. We didn't just make it free. No, we should make Don't that buy free. It. Do not buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> Don't buy it. It's I, a you, real. Hey, hit me up. I will send you the fucking it's file. It's a real. Well, right? it's just a real rough draft. I'll send you. It's yeah. Here's I, the thing, though. That podcast that we did, we wrote funny shit because we were like crying, laughing when we were recording it. Oh my god! Yeah, it was great when we, we just <laughs> didn't. We just didn't put it together the way uh, we. There's no to. one else laughing in the sound. Yeah. Like it's hilarious to us because we're all feeding off each other's laughter, and there's no laugh yeah. track on that yeah, fucking it's, it's thing. Whatever. It took months to edit. No big deal. But also, um, we recorded it on uh, pretty much an easy bake oven. So anyway. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, you might dream, have to redo that. Speak murdered dreams, murdered people. Let's get back to our fun show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, I wasn't trying to banter too hard with you about spare bedroom. I didn't mean no, to open I up would that. Prefer to banter about spare bedroom <laughs> over this. <laughs> this is depressing. Oh, says you, says you. Who gave us the curtain episode? He was fun and flirty. <laughs> yeah, he was fucking animals. <laughs> Nothing but fun there. My dad actually talked to me about. He's like, man. Last week's episode was tough to listen to. Yeah. That like, was disgusting. That guy went bananas. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I know It's that. one of our most listened to episodes that we have with uh, the YouTube numbers. Damn, yeah. Daniel. Shouts to Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it starts with a haunted house. Six months before the murders, the family's former maid quit. Just was like, I'm done working here. She feared that the house was haunted. And the reason for that is that she was telling her employer that she often heard footsteps and voices coming from the attic above her room at night. Whenever they investigated, nothing would turn up. And like, they were like, you got to stop complaining about this pretty much. You, you, we get it. You're scared. But like, we keep going up in the attic. There's nothing up there. It's like, it only happens at night, mister. But they go up in the day. There's right. nothing there. Oh, the ghost. Yeah. Of course the ghost isn't here during the day. The vampire's not here during the day either. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. No, Come I'm, back at night. And a lot of these kind of things are going to happen. We're going to be like, of course, this fucking happened to these people. So also, yeah, I probably not a ghost. Again, probably a hobo. I, just living in the attic. I don't respect the maid's complaint because it's old timey times. So every building's haunted. Everything's haunted. Especially in Europe. Like nothing's new there. God, Everything's the, haunted as shit. The, just the sound. But I don't like how everything's attributed to hauntings where it's like, this is it's an, an old, old house. <laughs> it's creaky, creaky house. house. Yeah. Yeah. We but, built it out of unused boat wood. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's just going to be creaky. Yeah. And it's going to be built on some field that was probably, there was some bat- massive battle on. Everywhere most likely. there is a structure, things have died in that plot. Yeah. Probably on a, what's, what's, the, what's the European equivalent of an Indian burial, burial ground? Like a Druid burial ground? Your house is over that? Just a European yeah. burial ground, yeah. tribal burial ground, right. whatever, you know, like Visigoth, uh, fucking Celtics, whatever you, wherever you are, there are barbarians yeah. or pagans that if fucking died If you're in Europe, there. it's haunted. Yeah. It's haunted. You Any- go to a fucking Amsterdam sex house, a ghost is watching you get fingered by a prostitute. That's right. It's, it's like my favorite, my favorite thing is when like, chicks go to like a, a wedding in the south they're like i get really good vibes from this venue it's like you do huh huh, huh interesting yeah there shouldn't be any good vibes here yeah it's all slave land well or on plantation good water. times were probably had in the main house a lot of singing yeah, yeah. Gonna, the, in the main the, house the red light district goes to it's gonna be probably a better time 
Yeah. Oh yes. man, a hooker haunting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which begs the question, if you have sex with a ghost hooker, is it cheating? No. No. Absolutely not. You're never getting her off though. No. <laughs> I mean dead it's, or alive, what's not, the difference? Is it, what's the what was the old dumb saying? Like it's not cheating if you're in a different zip code. Right. I thought it was area code. Area code? Either way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't zip think code it's... Is, zip code is, like, <laughs> down the street. <laughs> part of the city. <laughs> it's, like, in a different neighborhood. Like, it could be around the corner. I, I moved a mile away, and that's yeah. a different zip code. Yeah, from where... <laughs> it's like, so it's not cheating if you're four blocks from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's another the... dimension, I'll give you that. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If it's yeah. another dimension... You're, if you're crossing into another dimension, <laughs> Can you imagine if you, like I'm sure code. someone has said zip code yeah, before. Four blocks away. Or what if someone? What if I they? Think it's still cheating. If you're four what, blocks away, the mice will play. <laughs> what if a couple had a, a area code cheating rules? Like, eh, you know what? We're young. If you're in a different area code, it's fine. And the guy got confused and thought she meant zip code. So like, oh, I banged your secretary. <laughs> yeah, I just fucked her friend. <laughs> there was like, a, at her apartment <laughs> that's just in a different zip code. There was yeah. a guy on Reddit not that long ago um, where they had a hall pass. But his girlfriend's hall pass was like a local DJ. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, awful. So it was like very, very Extremely like Extremely achievable. It's, yes. Yeah. She does it. And he's like, uh, I don't know what to think. Like she ended up, she said it was her hall pass, but like, should I be angry? Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not like it's fucking you gotta, McConaughey you or didn't, Brad Pitt. It's the fucking dude playing the ones and twos <laughs> no. at a bar mitzvah fucking, down the street. Wait. Oh, wait. It wasn't even like a radio, famous radio DJ? No. It was just some fucking so local guy DJ. Getting, what? Yeah. It, probably met her. It wasn't even mass media. It was just a fucking <laughs> probably, guy. Probably met her at the gym, dude. It was a fucking guy. Yeah. It's like, uh, essentially, it'd be like saying, yeah, my hall pass is just the girl that works front desk at Lifetime. Uh, but no, yeah, my hall pass is the, the host of Softcore History. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find him. <laughs> God, that would be, don't. If any of us are your hall passes, reevaluate your fucking Seriously. life. <laughs> and if we are the hall pass for any of your significant others, have a deep conversation with them about their choices. Anyway, here's some other weird things that happened leading up to the murders, not just the haunting that the maid described. Uh, Andreas Gruber, the father and patriarch, found a strange newspaper from Munich on the property in March of 1922. He could not remember buying it and initially believed that the postman had just lost the newspaper. But here's the thing. No one in the vicinity of the Hinterkaifeck plot was subscribed to the newspaper. And there weren't a lot of people around. So the, news, the postman's not dropping a newspaper off there. So it's a lot of dummies don't care about the news. Yeah. No. Why and would none they? None of the Hinterkaifecks. No. Got it. And in this episode, too, I'm going to remind you, like... The mailman's the, dropping off the newspaper? It's not like a local paper boy? There's not a local much of anything mm -hmm. in this area. It's mostly just the woods. Um, Hinterkaifeck also refers to the property itself. Yeah, it's, it's, like hinter is something to describe land, right? Like I, I'm not sure. I didn't look up the etymology of it. You go for it. But um, yeah, I, they refer to the area because there's no citizen or not citizen. There isn't any like municipality there as Hinterkaifeck itself because it's a lot of land in that wood. Um, just days before the murders, Gruber told neighbors he discovered tracks in the fresh snow that led from the forest to a broken door lock in the farm's machine room, but none that led back out. Couldn't figure out what happened there, but he just said, meh, whatever. Farm stuff. The, the lock was open, but, but what was the second part of that? So he found tracks that led to the machine room in the farm. Yeah. Uh, foot. Footsteps leading up to it. There was a uh, okay, broken... Okay, no footsteps on the way out. No footsteps on the way out. There was a broken door lock. There's no way in other than that door. Yeah, homie's still there. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? Andreas also told neighbors that his keys had gone missing. This is all leading up to the events of the murder. Later during the night, they heard footsteps again in the attic, but Gruber found no one when he searched the building the next day. Do Although it was a janitor ghost <laughs> collecting keys? Maybe. But we'll get to this. There's a lot of details in here. I hope you can kind of remember because I'm going to bring up some stuff. You're going to be like, wait a second. I'm going to be like, yeah, it's probably this guy. So uh, although he. The so, mailman? Is it the mailman? It's not the mailman. Oh, okay. I was the only even person I've heard of outside of the family so far. Right. So uh, they heard footsteps even after the maid moved out. But uh, no one was there when he searched the building the next morning. Even though he told several people about all these alleged observations, like the keys and the paper and uh, the footsteps, the, foots, the footsteps in the attic and the footsteps leading up to the machine room, he refused to accept any help and the details went unreported to the police. He even declined to borrow a gun from one of his neighbors to protect himself and his family after telling them that. They were like, hey man, do you want a gun to like, right. keep your family safe? He's like, no. 
What's a gun going to do to a yeah, ghost anyway? This isn't haunted. Yeah. Nothing's haunted here. Nothing is wrong. This yeah. is sus to me about the father, by the way. Like, why is he just ignoring all this yeah, shit? He doesn't care. What's yeah. a gun to a He's ghost? 62. Okay. So, and ghost his wife's 72. Or like so he doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't think don't a person's there. In. He's not worried about the animals because he's already fucked all of them. And All he cares so. about is Chorin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And he likes fucking too. Yeah. We'll get to that. Plus, he's got bigger things to worry about, like his old daughter. He was just mooching off of him. His 35-year-old daughter? Yeah, his old daughter. He, I guarantee he was thinking a lot about her. On the day of the murders, oh there was boy. a lot going on at the Hinterkaifeck house. It was a Friday, and everyone was presumably like presumably wrapping up their chores for the week. And TGIF. Yeah, I know. Uh, they're getting ready for, uh, you know, getting all excited for Saturday, and then, of course, Sunday, which is the biggest day in the middle of nowhere. That's church day where you get to see other people. Yeah. What do you even do? What do you, what's the fucking exciting about a Friday in 1920 rural Actually, Germany? nothing. Um, like sat, they still have school on Saturday, and they still work on Saturday. So it's yeah. a Friday. It's, it's, it's a basically day. Friday. It's, it's endless. It's, it would be like Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're getting all jazzed up for Sunday fun day, I guess, in their minds. That's what I like to think out in rural deep woods, Germany. But there's a new addition to the homestead. Because you guessed it, Rob. This would be the hiring of the new maid the day she starts, Maria Baumgartner. Okay. Her very first day on the job is the day the murders happen. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So are you sure this didn't happen on a Monday? Right. <laughs> Sounds I, like I, it. I did look that up, actually, to be like, God, this would be, like, can you imagine it's your first day, Monday, yeah. you're murdered as a maid? I'm not even supposed yeah, to be here today. I'm not even supposed to start this day. Um, was it Arnold? I should have stayed home today. Magic school bus. I thought it was Clerks. Oh, well, that is Clerks. Clerks. Yeah. Isn't I supposed to be here today? Yeah. Also, the alternate ending of Clerks is he gets murdered. Oh, yeah. yeah. He gets shot in a yeah, robbery. Like right? a robbery of the yeah. store, yeah. Uh, Maria Baumgartner, who was the new maid starting that day, was escorted through the woods by her sister to be dropped off at the Hinterfeig. Through the forest, huh? At the Hinterkaifix. And, uh, that explains why Germany has a lot of uh, getting lost in the woods and eaten by witches. I mean, have you ever... I, I guess... Have you ever been to Germany? No. Uh, the... Dark, the Black Woods. My fucking grandpa has. The Black Woods, though. Yeah, I've been to the airport. No it, big deal. It's dark. Like, you yeah. drive through that shit, and it's like you look into it, and it's just, you see about three trees deep, and then it's just blackness. Because yeah. so, the foliage is so dense. Um, so it does kind of, especially in Bavaria, there is, like, it's heavily wooded. So it does kind of explain why a lot of the fairy, the grim tales, especially, are yeah. in the woods. A you lot go of in the there. Yeah. And, it's, and I mean, there's just pieces of candy that go into the forest. Also, that witch sounded so... Candy witch? Sign me up for candy witch. She's not all bad. She eats children. So what? Yeah, you. but like you're enjoying it up to the point where you get boiled alive. I suppose that's true. Also, like Hansel and Gretel is about like someone... Like the original Hansel just turns into like a deer. He doesn't get eaten in an oven. It's really actually about the overconsumption of humanity. So America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How we overindulge. We've, we're glad you've listened this long because this is now an anti-capitalism podcast. <laughs> and Cap, what's up? Yeah. We don't yeah, do that well, shit. It is a Jake joint, so. It is a jo- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very anti-work, too. See, if they weren't all busy choring, they wouldn't have died. They would have paid attention to all the weird noises. Capitalism murdered these people. I think most murders can be attributed to capitalism. You know, I was going to say, we talk about doing the segment on the show called Who's the Hitler in this yeah. story. To, oh, uh, yes. It's always capitalism. It's all always capitalism. Yeah, it's always just capitalism. Capitalism or George is Bush. Hitler. Or George disagree. Bush. Uh, in the, in the, sh- the, the, the tale, though, what kind of candy are we talking is, is it candy corn? Because there's not a chance it's candy corn, right? It's f- dog shit old-timey candy. Old country candy. It's, it's like a ball melted- of molasses. I was going to say it's just reduced sugar yeah. into a or like a, 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 a Werther's Originals. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the whole way out. Pretty much. That's caramel. what Werther's Originals yeah. are, are just like old school. That's all these people had, candy. though. You know what I mean? They didn't know better. Um, but anyway, so Maria was escorted through the woods by they her sister. Ain't no candy, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> that's a reach. That's a that's a really good reference for anyone that likes college football. Yeah. Um, Maria was escorted through the woods by her sister, dropped off at the Hinterfikes, and Maria's sister, as far as we know, is the last person to see any of these people alive. Uh, the rest of this story that I'm going to tell is theoretical or presumed and based entirely on the conditions of the bodies found the circumstances surrounding the case and the notes of the investigators at the time of the investigation. So everything else from now on is all based on them walking in on this fucking nightmare crime scene and being like, yeah, maybe they were there. 
Hey, uh, that one was on the stairs probably before its foot ended up over there. Yeah. Well, here's the reason why it's all really interesting is because of where the bodies are found, the condition they're in, also the locations in particular aren't all together. So it's not like, it's not a run around spree kind of kill. Okay. It's, it's very calculated from what it sounds like. So S- sounds very German. Yeah, exactly. Efficiency. Uh, yeah. So this is from the initial crime scene investigation. It appears that in the late evening, Victoria Gabriel, her seven-year-old daughter, young Cazelia, and her parents, Andreas and Cazelia, the older, were lured to the family barn through the stable, where they were murdered one at a time. The perpetrator, or perpetrators, depending on who you ask, used a mattock belonging to the, or mattock, however you want to pronounce it, belonging to the family farm. What is that? It's, um, so it kind of looks like a pickaxe. But it's not. It's for digging trenches. Um, okay. It's it's got like a really flat. It's like it looks like a blunt axe okay. on one side vertical, and then on the other side it's horizontal. Oh, that guy picked the wrong souvenir to bring home from World War One. Yeah, that. I'm gonna bring my old my old trench axe. Home. Well, it's good for farming too because you can yeah. dig like obviously right. trenches for planting seed and clearing out rocks, stuff like that. Um, so the family they they obviously use the one from the family farm presumably, and killed the family with blows to the head. Whoever killed the family was extremely familiar with using the tool as the wounds were incredibly precise. First off, again, trench axe. Doesn't narrow it down. What year is it? <laughs> 1922, right after the big war. Yeah, right after yeah. that war where they dug all the trenches. You're right. So... Could be anybody. It literally could be any man in Germany. <laughs> Uh, this weapon was not found at the scene, but would be consistent with the wounds and the items typical to the location of the scene. So they, they're pretty much like... it. They had one of these at the farm. Yeah. They had to have. There's it would be a normal dug. tool at the farm. Yeah. And it's, there's, there's not one here. Yeah. So we don't know. Uh, after those four were murdered in the barn, the perpetrator suppo- supposedly moved into the living quarters where, with the same murder weapon, he killed Yosef sleeping in his bassinet and Baumgartner, who was in her bedchamber. Now, the four in the barn is- That's ex- how you want to go out though, right? Asleep? Yes. Asleep- as Brutally, an, <laughs> as an infant murdered. with a fucking pickaxe, getting <laughs> pickaxe. ripping your body in half, probably pretty much. That's how my grandfather said he wanted to go out. Well, he was too old. Did for you that. oblige him? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he was asking. He's saying something. no. Dan hasn't said a word What'd since you, you asked. Yeah, I, I don't want to. You know, the statute of limitations hasn't passed yet. Yeah, there isn't one on murder. Fam- doesn't count for family. Yeah, there isn't yeah. one on murder. That's so. euthanasia, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but also murder. Yeah, well, if it's consensual, I don't know. Is don't there know, a definition for euthanasia, euthanasia on the hook if they kill somebody? What? Would it be consensual? You euthanize a dog. They don't consent to being put down, though. Dogs don't consent to anything we do. That's fair. Dogs don't even consent to the food we give them. No. They, but they sure do like it. Day. Yeah. Um, so... This is all going to be discovery from here on out. So those are the facts we know about the case. There's four dead bodies in the barn. Okay. Two in the house. How do you get lured to the barn? This is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, that's like, what are you just in the barn? Like, <laughs> like and then fucking, and then like, they're like, we all better go look. Yeah. We all better go. Well, one by one. Like if there's one person, they're not killing four people with a pickaxe. So okay. it would have had to have been one by so, one. Oh, I'm sorry. So they got you lured. Were one person there. One at a time. One yeah. at a time. So I they think were we like, should split up, Scoob. <laughs> Literally. Well, I, I imagine it goes something like, oh, like, what's that out there? And they're like, I'll go check it. Someone doesn't come back. All right, I'll go check on them. That I mean, person I would have got back. away with it if it wasn't for you, darn kids. Yes. Tell you what, fool me once. I'm feeling a, this is a big fool me once vibe. A lot of it's fooled me once. Obviously, the house has already been told to have been haunted. Are stupid, You're hearing man. voices yeah. and footsteps in your attic. You're seeing footprints go up to your house but not leave it. Yeah. Your keys go missing, and there's a strange paper in your kitchen. I mean, if any of, any one of these things happen to me, I'm moving out of the house for a little bit until I can fucking scrub it. I'd like to test that theory. Were you going to hide in my attic and make noises? Yeah, leave weird newspapers around. <laughs> Okay, um, so the killings went undetected for four days until April 4th, 1922. This was largely because in the days after the murders, the Gruber's neighbor saw smoke coming from the home's chimney, indicating someone was using the house's fireplace. Thus, it seemed as if the family were alive and well 
In addition, the farm animals and the livestock were fed, and someone even went to the trouble of milking all the cows. The cows were milked. Damn. Yeah, so, like, this person knew their way around a fucking farm. Yeah. Um, Wanted to cosplay a little bit. And they're like, oh, well, mull over why they might know a little bit about the farm. Police also discovered someone had recently eaten food in the family's house, causing them to conclude the killer had not only lived in the house after murdering six people, but had also performed daily tasks like preparing meals and also just random maintenance, like, of course, milking the cows. Because the perpetrator fed the animals and used the fireplace for days after the murders, the family's neighbors weren't particularly particularly concerned when little Kazilia missed school on Saturday, April 1st. They had school on Saturday. How mm. much does that suck? I would have been like, you know what? Kill me. Yeah. Saturday school? Fuck Oh, that. boy. Kill yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Or when the family skipped church that Sunday, which would be a red flag, but they saw the fucking smoke coming out. Right. So they're like, okay, maybe there's a reason they missed church. Maybe they're sick. We don't yeah. know. However, when Kazelia didn't show up for school on Monday and the mailman noticed no one had picked up their letters in a while he delivered over the weekend, the Gruber's neighbors began to worry about the six people who lived at the Hinterkaifeck farm. Conse- consequently, three people who lived near the Gruber's home visited the farm and discovered the battered corpses in the barn and house. Police were immediately notified about the killings and law enforcement arrived from Munich to start interviewing people. So this person, what, lived there for like two days and then got the fuck out of Probably Dodge? two or three. Yeah. yeah. The fourth day they were definitely gone. Yeah. Well, um, you don't want to... You don't want to hang around too long. Yeah, it's, it starts to get smelly. You can't enjoy your meals anymore. We'll talk about smell soon, too. Yeah. There's right. a lot it's like Vegas. You only want to be there for like 48 hours. It's two days. Yeah. You leave the yeah. third. Vegas and a house with a dead toddler in it. 48 hours. It's max. air conditioned. It's cold. It's winter. So it's not going to start smelling too bad. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but you also don't want those ghosts to start getting their legs from, uh, you know, get getting their getting their ghost legs getting right. their sea legs start feeling themselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like the first couple of days you're like where ghost am powers. i what happened where's my baby and you're like, like shut up ghost i'm trying to eat yeah they're like yeah. i don't know and they fade in and out but then you know after a while it's, they're permanent yeah they start they're like they know what's happening and they're like there's that fucking guy still here eating toast stop eating our toast bro go milk the cows they got exploding yeah. titties about to happen how do ghosts work though can you get revenge on the person that killed you as a ghost or oh. maybe yeah, yeah maybe possibly. you can or is it like he he owns your soul now? He doesn't own your soul. Well, I didn't like one of the crazy old serial killers thought that like all of those his victims would be slaves. So to him, I forget which what one. It might have like been Mormon Zodiac. Planet. I thought it was like Zodiac or something like that. Thought like everyone he killed would be a slave to him in the afterlife. Ooh, which what is, if that got accidentally proven true? We'd all be murdered a lot. <laughs> be mass, mass shootings all over the place. Yeah. It's like, you're my slave. Yeah. yeah. The Mormons are like, guess what? Everyone does get your planet, get their own planet when they die. And anyone you kill, they're working for you on that planet. And uh, <laughs> guess what? There's no protesters on that planet to, or labor unions. It's just they're there. You're God. You're God. They're there. You, they have to listen to you. What if we're on a planet... We're all ghosts that were murdered by someone on another planet in another dimension. We're just popping off like six billion people <laughs> constantly. Damn. Yeah, that's why the population keeps going up. He's just getting more efficient. I always thought my child had an old soul. <laughs> Must have been a nursing home murder. <laughs> but then you know, <laughs> showed up in my infant's body. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Are we? Um, okay. One of the biggest issues with getting any leads at all, they, so they, as I mentioned before, they interviewed like a hundred people plus. Uh, one of the biggest issues. With, so everyone, yeah, everyone around, everyone in the vicinity, <laughs> essentially, they interviewed because there weren't a lot of people there anyway. One of the biggest issues, though, was the amount that the crime scene was reportedly messed with before the discovery of the bodies even took place. Well, yeah, someone was living there. Well, yeah, that and other people showed up before noticing the bodies. So, April first. Uh, Someone actually showed up to the house. No one went in, though. So, and presumably speaking, the person that was cooking shit and stuff would yeah. still be there okay. at this time. And they're like, who? So, on April 1st, coffee sellers Hans uh, Stravosky and Edward Stravosky arrived in Hinterkaifeck to take an order. When no one responded to the knocks on the door and the window, they walked around the yard but found no one. The only, they only noticed that the gate to the machine house was open before they decided to leave. So they're already touching the door and knocking on the windows and stuff. That's, that's minor. Then a, an, assembler named Albert, sorry, one second. an assembler named Albert Hoffner went to the Hinterkaifeck farm on April 4th. This is the day they found the bodies to repair the engine of the food chopper. He stated that he had not seen any of the family and had heard nothing but the sounds of the farm animals and the dog inside the barn. 
So dogs also Oh, poor care puppy. Him. Yeah. After waiting for an hour, he decided to start his repair without, you know, being told to do it. He's like, I got to get this done. Uh, he said he completed the repair in roughly four and a half hours. So that's four and a half hours of just fumbling around the machine room in the house and getting inside. Yeah. And just not noticing six dead bodies. Well, there four in the barn, one's in a bassinet, and yeah. one's in a room. Right. So he, if he's Listen. not going into the main house, he's not going to notice He's that. locked in. Right. He's working. Yeah. A Dude. German just does his job. Have you ever, okay, if you've ever done manual labor, the last thing I'm going to do is go investigate. If I, I've been on delivery jobs and shit like that, it's like I'm the last the thing. I'm not doing more work than I need to do. Yeah. I'm doing the work I was paid to do and that I was assigned to do. I'm yeah, leaving. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. It's like, oh, uh, the oven is smoking. I don't give a fuck. I'm here to fish yeah. the, f- I'm right. fixing the food chopper. That's what I'm doing. So around 3.30 p.m., and remember this name, Lorenz Schlittenbauer sent his son Johan and stepson Josef to Hinterkaifeck to see if anyone could contact, could like make contact with the family because he hadn't heard from them in a little bit. Who is Lawrence? Who is Lawrence Schlittenbauer? Why does he care about the family? It's assumed that he is the lover of Victoria Gabriel, the daughter of the Hinterkaifeck single mom. The single mom. Yeah. Single mom. Um, when they reported that they did not see anyone, Schlittenbauer headed to the farm the same day with Michael God, Poole and Jacob C.G. Just push through it. Just yeah, push through it. It's just weird German. Just say yes. Yeah. Entering the barn, they found the bodies. And interestingly enough, we will hear the name Lawrence Sch- Schlittenbauer again pretty soon on even more detail. As there may be a reason he sent his stepchildren to contact the family and not himself first. And obviously one of them is that he was probably porking Victoria. Right. And he didn't want to make it like, are you okay? Are you yeah, okay? Oh, babe, babe, yeah. babe. Here's some other things of note about the investigation. So in the inspection record of the court commission. Yeah. You don't want to come off too clingy, you know? No. Yeah, man. You got your side piece out in the woods. You don't want to, like, ruin that, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you, like, you can't, even if they're murdered. She's you in don't a different zip code. You don't want to, yes. Yeah. But you don't want to come off too eager, even if she right. is dead. Even if she is dead, yeah. So, also, by the way, if she's murdered in a different zip code, free for all. Wait, what? You can do whatever you want. Well, yeah. After she's, she's murdered in a different no zip code. You're no longer tied down. Yeah, but oh, you, you don't even like, have to feel bad. There's no, there's no mourning time. She's murdered in a different zip code. Yeah. So what am start, I supposed you, to do? You just fuck right away. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, that's a yeah. different zip code, bro. Probably uh, get some good breakup gains. <laughs> Gains. You're, not even You're thinking about working out. You're yeah. just lifting. Yeah. yeah, everyone's doing farm work. Good they Lord. don't worry about gains. Yeah, they 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 have gains every day. Yeah. They, in fact, they're they they're just actually need to eat. They they need food. Yeah. They're if they don't eat, they have losses. Yeah. Quite often. Uh, so in the uh, inspection report of the court commission, it was noted that the victims were probably drawn to the barn by restlessness in the stable, resulting in noises from the animals. However, a later attempt revealed that. They couldn't hear loud noises from the living area or anywhere in the house if they were coming from the barn. Right. So there's no luring them to the barn with like, they couldn't, they tried to do like blood curdling screams from inside the barn. You couldn't hear it from inside the fucking house. On the night after the crime, three days before the bodies were discovered, there was an artisan, Michael Plocky, who happened to pass by the Hinterkaifeck barn. Plucky observed that the oven had been heated by someone, and while he was going up to approach, a person had approached him with a lantern and blinded him where he couldn't see the person's makeup, um, or the makeup of the person's face, right? Uh, so it could have been a clown, because he couldn't, <laughs> you know, uh, he couldn't you know see what his I'm makeup. To, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like, they couldn't see the person's face. But it could have been a clown. It could have been a clown, because yeah. they couldn't see the makeup. Yes. Um, so he hastily continued on his way. Pocky also remembered. Yeah, I would too. If someone was like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? Hey! <laughs> with, hey! With, with a lantern in hand, yeah. 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 Right, let's, <laughs> let's fire. I mean, <laughs> are, are we sure Paul Revere is dead at this point? Probably dead. Okay. Okay. Unless just, he's also immortal. I'm just making, some, making uh, sure. Pocky also noted that the Maybe smoke a traveler from, like Nick Cage. He could be. What? What movie is that? No, no. You ever see just old photos of the Civil War? There's, oh, there's yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of photos on the internet. Keanu where like, Reeves that's, is, is immortal. Keanu Reeves is another one, yeah. That's Nick Cage. Yeah. No, I, I can believe that, though. Okay. Like, whatever. Keanu Reeves, whatever. I believe Nick Cage. Travel that's time. Fair. So you think he just got that T-Rex skull on his own? Well, yeah, he went back and got He didn't buy it for, for yeah. millions no. of dollars. No. Absolutely not. Um, it's really weird, that old Civil War photo. He's dressed as his character in Con Air. That's why it's so uncanny. Yeah. 
Con Air is a great movie. It's so not good. as good as The Rock, but man. No one's ever. By the way, have you heard the, the what did you say? No one's ever said Connor is better than The Rock. I know. The Rock is the greatest action movie ever made. For you sure. You know what? I like that take. That's a good take. That The Rock is the greatest action mm-hmm. movie ever it's made. It's a really good movie. I think it's the best. I think it is by far the best action movie ever made. It's fucking crazy. Also, I love the the small, tiny, not obviously confirmed or true or anything, but the fan theory that it's a James Bond film. Oh, and Sean Connery's James Bond? Yes, old Sean James Connery's Bond. old James Bond. I like that. Yeah. I also like that take. Yeah. That's look, pure. That's fanfic, but this is fine. a rock podcast now. The yeah. ro- the rock, mm-hmm. not Dwayne Johnson. Mm, yeah. Losers the, always whine about the best. I can't yeah. do it. Winners, Winners go, go home, home and, and fuck the prom queen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so great, good. great, terrible can lines you, in that movie. Bad you, dialogue. Like if in me, like fifth grade, me and my friends, like watching that on a sleepover, <laughs> just fucking dying every time they say that. That and the other great line is. He's like, oh, you, 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 uh, you like, you like the Rocket Man? And I don't listen to that soft ass shit. As he like pulls a knife up to his face. I also like the part where he's like, "Welcome to the Rock." Yeah, <laughs> welcome also, to the Rock. Yeah, it's really good. It's so fucking good. <laughs> it's, that's why I can never hate Michael Bay. No, who hates Michael he, Bay? Because he made that movie. The other great Michael Bay story is when someone came in to ask him, like, "Hey." Aren't astronauts like super smart scientists? Wouldn't it be smarter to train astronauts to do all these other jobs than train all these other people to be astronauts? Yeah, and he was ben like, Affleck. Yeah, ben, a- ben Affleck came in and he's like, Oh, hey, Ben, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just shut up, Ben. Just shut the, just YouTube the Ben Affleck DVD commentary for yeah. Armageddon. It's incredible. Yeah. But that and then how <laughs> when Megan Fox called him Hitler, just going <laughs> back to Hitler for this episode again, for, like she's like, He's like Hitler on the set and he. Spielberg fired her because he was the executive producer. And, uh, like, my, people were like, oh, is Michael Bay a mean director? And he was like, I'm sorry for making you show up on time. Yeah. To your job. Yeah. It's a totally valid argument. Yeah. It is. It's and, like you're getting paid how much to do Megan this? Megan Fox, by the way, is just now confirming more and more every day that Michael Bay was the good guy in that situation. I, yeah, I started dating Machine Gun Kelly because of I Am Weed or whatever the yeah. fuck. Yeah. I Am Weed. Oh, cool, man. It's fucking deep. Um, like them to get Hunter Kaifik. <laughs> <laughs> so mysteriously stabbed in their barn? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, on the night after the crime. Oh, I already said this part. So, yeah. The other thing that guy noticed when he was passing through by the barn was that uh, not only was there a crazy person with a lantern, like, hello, get out of here. Uh, yeah. There was a terrible smell coming from the fireplace, like the smoke billowing out of the chimney. Okay. Which is really weird because they, they, the the right? they found all the bodies. They found all the bodies. Maybe he's pooping in the fireplace? I don't know. Uh, the, the best part is this instance was not investigated as there were no investigators conducted to determine what had been burned that night in the oven. So no one looked in the oven. A little handicapped. It's not like 1922. What are are they going to figure out? Well, they did have fingerprint technology at the time. Oh, okay. And they did not pull fingerprints. Fingerprinting, as far as I recall, would have been brand new. I mean, they had it. They were using it at that time. Like, I think it's like, well, cause, uh, okay. So I think it's like 20 years old max. Yeah. But like it's, some it's a crime where they sent people from Munich up to investigate it. You yeah. think they would have fingerprints. Yes. Like the other the problem is though, yeah, okay, they can find fingerprints. Yeah, how long it does it take? Is it match? on the record? Like right. yeah, that's yeah. the thing. They don't there know. is no record. Yeah. Yeah. You have to you have you to have find to go through every... the actual files, the cabinets. But they don't they don't even have, have that fingerprints they don't have that. folders. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they don't even, how, how long did they take a fingerprint they got the town, for five they got, years? They got the town goat fucker. That's it. Right. Yeah. It's like, is it the goat fucker? Oh, yeah. well, these fingerprints won't do. Uh, it's yeah. not the goat fucker. Well, <laughs> it's we can never the goat fucker. Yeah. Okay, so another Well, sometimes it is the goat fucker. Sometimes it's Peter Kirk. <laughs> sometimes it's yeah. him. Yes. The one it's, barn he You can't immediately rule out the goat fucker until like you have proof that it's not him. The go fucker is just like, you You know what? I'm sick of this, guys. Get more fingerprints on file. Peter Curtin. I'm t- fu- tired of coming in every time you get a fingerprint. Yeah. At this point, you should just have mine memorized. Yeah. Exactly. No, they really should. But um, on April 1st at 3 a.m., the farmer and butcher, Simon Rice Launder, on the way home near... On the way home near the farm, saw two unknown figures at the edge of the forest. When the strangers saw him, they turned around so that their faces could not be seen. They didn't run away. They just turned around, which is creepier than anything to me. Yes. Like, yes. That's terrifying. Just like, you can't see our face now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he kind of was like, that's weird, and kept going. Later when he heard of the murders. Yeah, was, you have to balance it with like, oh, man, those guys are fucked up. But then you're like, oh, but I live in Germany. Yeah. So. This could be just fun God. for them. Yeah. 
Yeah. So he thought it could be connected. Uh, nothing was ever followed up on that. Cause I mean, what are they going to follow up on? It's just right. two people in the woods. Like I, we live in Austin. If I see a guy walking down the street, pretty much like going down South Congress, like pretty much naked, they could be on PCP or they could just be a fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. Riding the unicycle. Yeah. I saw a guy I don't know. South by Southwest literally bouncing on his Oh, I was there with you. Was that were you with me with yeah. that? The naked guy with the giant dick? Yeah, who was slamming his penis into the street. Yeah. No, he was like definitely losing his mind on drugs. His dick was huge. huge. And he it was, was unbelievably big. And he was slamming it into the asphalt. He was, was he like, was sitting there like spread legged, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like he was sitting Screaming. there screaming. Like, like so like sit, you're sitting on the floor, if you're not watching this on video, he sit he's sitting on the floor, like on the street, uh, on a brick street, completely his legs like in a V, sp- totally spread out, holding his humongous penis. Flaccid humongous penis. His flaccid humongous penis, slapping it into the street. <laughs> and <laughs> screaming. Just, ah! ah! <laughs> like, people like, are like, dude, stop. You're going to get arrested. It's like, he's past that. He needs to be arrested. Dude, so yeah, who's reasoning Some, with him? Someone needs to come get this guy. What, what sweet, naive soul was reasoning with Someone visiting that guy. Someone from LA oh, visiting we're South, 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 South by, right? It South by. Yeah, yeah, perhaps yeah. it was performance art. We don't know. I don't fully know. Yeah. I, oh, you're right. That was also about the overconsumption of Americans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, everything leads back to capitalism. It was look, yeah. yes, it was capitalism's fault that that guy was slamming his penis into the brick street on, on Sixth Street. Yeah, one hundred percent. So uh, we, that was never even, you didn't need to bring that up. That, right. that's, that was that a given. Goes without saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so another couple things here. In the middle of May 1927, so this is five years after the murder, a stranger was said to have stopped a resident of Weidhofen at midnight. Weidhofen is now the city now where the barn was built. Uh, he asked some questions about the murder and then shouted that he was the murderer before he ran into the woods. The woods are a big problem in this place with yeah. suspects, clearly. Speaking of that, the stranger was never identified, of course, because it's fucking midnight in the yeah. woods. Right. It's like, hey, what you know about this? I did it. Yeah. Bye. Like, love that story. That's I killed them. And yeah. then he just giggles off into the forest. Yeah. Now, here's where we get to some gross parts, guys. These are some gold star things. So, uh, here's a fun fact. Apparently, seven years before the residents of Hinter Kaifek Farm were murdered with a pickaxe, um, Andreas and Victoria were convicted of incest in 1915. Mm-hmm. She, so, he was banging his daughter? Yeah, um, whether or not it was consensual is debated. Most people think he was raping his daughter. Okay. Um, so she was 28? Uh, seven years. Yeah, she'd be like 28 years old okay. at this time. She served. So she had her kids already. No. There's one kid. One kid. There's actually an two. Baby. There's two children. That no, the other one was seven. The other one was seven. <laughs> Yeah. Good Lord. So start doing some math here quick, right? I did it. Yeah, you did it. But there's also, uh, she served one month in jail for the crime while her father (laughs) was sent. (laughs) (laughs) While her father was sent away for an entire year. At least he served more time for it. But one month, like one month, one year. It's the victim. Go to jail. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Incest is the crime. Think about what you did. Think about what you let happen. Directly to jail. Yeah, whatever, so, just whatever the ju- insane justification was at the time. So a lot of people think the two-year-old Yosef was the child of Lorenz Schlittenbauer, who we talked about, who sent his stepsons there to go find the family and make contact with them, okay. her lover. Uh, a man who lived near the family, some of the Gruber's neighbors, and a couple others believed the child was the product of Andreas's incestuous relationship with his daughter. This would imply that the father and daughter continued having sex with each other years after the convicted they were convicted of incest. The true identity of Joseph's father and uh, I believe the daughter of Victoria are both a mystery. After the autopsy, here's another, here's a couple just weird fun Was facts. it a red flag that the baby didn't have any skin? It was bleeding a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was really weird. They cut yeah. all the fingertips off. It was very strange. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, but, it was born without fingertips. Right, because no, no skin. skin. Right. Well, it explains the no fingerprints then. Eyes where his testicles were supposed to be. Have, <laughs> did we ask about the baby? Did the baby murder? <laughs> the ba- yeah, it was a murder-suicide. The baby was very strong, two-year-old. Mm-hmm. Uh, swung that mattock around, killed its entire family. And then took himself out. Took himself out in the bassinet. They, they call it the terrible twos for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Toddlers, man. Would never expect it. Uh, I got three more fun facts before we go to the suspects. So here's another fun one. After the autopsy, the court physician removed the heads of all the victims, which he reportedly sent to Munich for further examination. Allegedly, the skulls of the Grubers and their maid were also given to clairvoyance 
to like figure out more. Yeah, well, it's 1922. Yeah. That's actually a good call. For yeah. 1922, that's a great call. Uh, yeah, so they were trying to learn more about who committed the brutal massacre. Uh, the skulls got lost. And then even like it, apparently somewhere in the building and then like after the war, World War II, they were never found again. So, so all these people are buried headless. Why I will blame capitalism again. Uh, their economy was in shambles thanks to, you know, the de- like the war, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, how fucked Germany got from World War I, like economically and everything like that. Maybe someone had to sell the heads. Uh, just sloppy work because everyone wasn't making enough money. Anyway, the heads disappeared because of capitalism. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or someone was running a ring. It's like, hey, how much time you want with the heads? That, yeah. That, yeah, give me 20 thing. minutes with the heads. Also, then you just get to sell, sell skulls. You know what's interesting? We all live in a skull. Wow. Yeah, deep. Whoa. Yeah. We're all just wet skeletons, bro. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Well, Your bones are wet, Dan. Anyway, uh, Dan didn't. Dan did not <laughs> feel like replying. Yeah. Um, anyway. I just kept thinking of Al Snow, former wrestler, uh, holding up head. It used to be one of his props. Nice. Yeah. Uh, here's probably one of the darkest facts about the case, though, and it's pretty disturbing. Oh, we're, is this is going to leap over father, fucking daughter. Yeah, it is. Wow. All I right. mean, we started with that last week. Yeah, we did. That was so. That we're was, already that was well the first five minutes of last daughter week. Daughter, fucking. So uh, investigators, when examining the body of young Cazelia, found that she had bald patches all over her head. And they thought, like, well, at first, like, maybe that's because they, like, beat her up or pulled her hair out to right. hold her down. Um, they found the clumps of hair clenched in her hands, causing them to conclude that she had ripped out her own hair. The authorities theorized that the little girl probably didn't die right away from her injuries, and Cazelia may have torn her own hair out as she laid like in just pure shock and terror in a pile of her dead family's bodies. So they didn't kill. Wait, but she also had a wound though, yeah, right? She died slow. So what she walked in, they, they hit her with something later. They laid her down in the pile with yeah. the other members of her family. And she came to and like was bleeding out. Okay. And they think that she was just freaking out. Like a seven year old is processing this. Right, right, right. And, so uh, she's next to the corpses of her mother and grandparents in the barn for several hours, dying. According to police, uh, she was live but fatally injured. She was dying in the barn, surrounded by the dead bodies. And the killer or killers, she probably saw them go inside the house after that. Right. And she knew her little brother and the maid were in there, too. Yeah. She knows not. She probably died soon after that. Yeah. Pretty fucking grisly. Like, th- just the idea that the kid is, like, so aware of what's going on that they were, like, they can't comprehend it and they rip their own hair out is horrifying to me so let's get to the suspects all right yeah. carl gabriel i was trying to think of a funny joke there isn't one about like god relax kid <laughs> That's, you can't yeah there's nothing there there's nothing there's no material there for me to yeah uh so the first suspect is carl gabriel the husband of victoria gabriel Carl Gabriel had reportedly been killed in uh, France by a shell attack in December 1914 during the First World War. So, so a dead guy. First a dead suspect, guy is the first suspect. First suspect, dead guy. So we're back to the ghost. The ghost did it. Yeah. Or it could be like a madman situation. So this is a game of, they had Game of Thrones rules. Yeah, I like that, yeah. Game of Thrones rules. If you don't see the person die, you can't confirm they're dead. Yeah. yeah. I so actually th- prefer the Band of Brothers version of that. If there ain't no body, then there ain't no body fucking dead. Ooh, I like that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so his body was never recovered in the shell attack. So after the murders, people began to speculate. He's recovering bodies. Like, all right, hold on, all right, all right. Let's this, find the pieces in the yeah, shell attack. Let's yeah. go. Let's get This em. is an arm. Yeah. They're just trying to play, like, make it a puzzle. Like, I think this arm goes with right. this head. And dude, well, that does happen in actual, like, in the awful uh, suicide bombing that happened in the Kabul airport. They will do that. They'll, like, collect right legs. To like see how many right legs there are, et cetera. Oh, but like that's grim. Here's the thing though. Or just the guy in Saving Private Ryan just picking up his arm. Yeah. But here's the thing though. You, you didn't get time for that during World War One. Right? Like yeah. it doesn't stop. No. It's still you're in the trench. Nothing where stops. It's funny trench, when they're yeah. like, oh yeah, he he got killed by a shelling. It was just always shelling. Yeah, shelling and gas and fucking beating each other yeah, up in except trenches. Except for that one Christmas where they played soccer. That, yeah. that didn't happen, right? Which didn't no, happen. it didn't. 
It, no, Jack said it didn't happen. So it, it happened. Either way, we're not here to debate the, that. What, you, what Coop's popping his head up. He doesn't think it happened either. No, I'm confused because I always heard that it, it was a true story. Yeah, I think it is a true story. Yeah, I think it's true. I think I maybe it might be a little fluffed up, but I think it's true. Uh, so. Apparently, after the murders, people began to speculate if he had indeed died in the war. Like, they were like, we're not sure if he died or not. So that's number not. one. Yeah, Victoria Gabriel. like, who could have buried these people? It has to be the, the dead guy number one. Okay, yeah. So Victoria Gabriel had given birth to Joseph in her husband's absence. Uh, two-year-old Joseph was rumored to be the son of Victoria and her father, Andreas, who had an incestuous relationship with her, and that was documented in court, as we discussed. He was raping his daughter in the town, convicted them both of incest. After the end of the Second World War, captives from the Schrobenhausen region who were released prematurely from Soviet captivity claimed that they had been sent home by a German-speaking Soviet officer who claimed to be the murderer of Hinterkaifeck. Some of these men later revised their statements, which diminishes their credibility, but many theorized that the Soviet might be Carl Gabriel because those that claimed to have seen the man after his reported death testified that Gabriel had wanted to go to Russia. That still makes no sense as to why he would go back to Hinterkaifeck to kill his family and, and leave. He's Soviet. He speaks Soviet now? He speaks Russian and German. Yeah. Okay. And this is over. Uh, so he would have died in 1914, I guess, turn coded to the guy, Russians. This is what, like what? On the other side of a fence with POWs? Like, hey, what's up? You guys German? I've been to Germany. You know what I did there? Fucking killed a bunch of Germans. Oh, not in the war. It was like 20 years earlier. And, uh, it was actually 1922, so it would have been like... 23, 24 years earlier? Yeah, so like... I mean, if he's doing POWs after the war, Soviet I, occupation, that'd be I don't, 45, 46. I, yeah, so that's really weird. Anyway, I don't buy any of that. Yeah, it's just like an old guy, like, yeah. hey, where you from? <laughs> like, how did this... Yeah. Yeah, this is bullshit. Uh, Lorenz Schlittenbauer, who we talked about before... Shortly after the death of his first wife in 1918, Lorenz was believed to have a relationship with Victoria Gabriel and fathered... All right, so widower, widower and widow. Yeah, and fathered Yosef. Uh, Schlittenbauer came under suspicion by locals early in the investigation because of his several suspicious actions immediately after the discovery of the bodies. This is why I think it's him. So well, I assumed that was the guy you were going to think it was, and honestly, it's always the fucking guy fucking someone. Right. It's, 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 it's just classic. Person. It's classic. Classic. Uh, when Schlittenbauer and his friends came to investigate, they had to break a gate to enter the barn because all the doors were locked. However, immediately after finding the four bodies in the barn, Schlittenbauer apparently unlocked the front door with a key he had and entered uh, the house. Well, <laughs> so well, from, first off, though, that doesn't the key thing doesn't matter because no. Remember though, a key to the house had gone missing several days before the murders. Oh, that does matter. Yes. Yeah, though it is also possible that Schlittenbauer, as a neighbor, as Victoria's potential lover, might have been given a key. It's very sus that one went missing well, days before the murder. It, and he that, happened to that's have one interesting. Out. The other thing too, though, is that like you wouldn't have needed a key to the house to get in and murder those people because presumably the people going out to the barn to check on God knows what. Yeah. Were not locking the door behind them. Sure. Sure. That's probably a good point. Why would they lock the door? There's plenty of people inside. Right. Also, you're probably not seen as, you know, dangerous you're, to them. Yeah, yeah. You're probably around a lot. Yeah. Um, Unless he was the one learning them in the bar and was like, Hey, come out and look at this thing in the barn. Uh, and then they come back. And that's like, what I'm saying. Oh, that's, your mom wants to, that's what, that's what Dan is saying. Like um, they're not threatening. Cause they're familiar with this yeah, guy. That's this how guy, he gets this, them out. This to guy the, did it. Yeah. Uh, Here's another thing. When asked by his companions why he had gone into the house alone when it was unclear if the murderer might still be there, Schlimbauer allegedly stated that he went to look for his son, Yosef. So he's admitting to the, the ah. crowd that that's his ah. kid. Um, regardless of any of the above rumor, it is known that Schlittenbauer had disturbed the bodies at the scene as well, thus potentially compromising the investigation. So. Wow. He wanted to remove him around. I understand it now when you can find all kinds of crazy tiny shit. But like, and I, I mean, know I, I guess, I, 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 I guess, I, I see what you're saying. It's like, how do they? Why are you moving the bodies? They're like, I want to see how they fucking died. What's yeah. up with these things? Yeah, it, it yeah. just there's a curiosity like, play there. Nowadays, people are like, oh, don't touch anything, don't touch the anything. We got to, you can figure out anything from just the way they are and everything. Back then, not only people didn't think that because you couldn't do that. But people didn't know that either. Just right. that you weren't supposed to do it either. Yeah. Like, um, so. How do you think Sherlock Holmes figured out investigations? 
Can't cocaine. Fuck with the bodies, man. Cocaine. It was cocaine. It was cocaine. Yeah, it was cocaine. Everyone knows it was cocaine. Like, there, yeah, everyone knows it was cocaine because everyone knows cocaine makes you smarter. Yeah, you put cooler. together, you connect the dots quicker. Yeah, and more awesome. Yeah, that's why it was so cool. So if you move the bodies, clearly it's going to be harder to connect the dots. Should we do an episode where we all just like blast off and just scream at each other about history for an hour? Or we try to solve this more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah, no. What do you mean um, blast off? Blast off for 45 minutes? Yeah. Nah, pass. I don't want to do any drugs right here for a podcast. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh, for many years after, local suspicion remained on Schlittenbauer because of his strange comments. So here's another great thing, which we're seen as indicating knowledge of details that only the killer would know, according to reports in the files of the case. <laughs> yeah, that, g- that girl <laughs> screamed a lot. <laughs> Local teacher Hansi Blogger discovered Schlittenbauer visiting the remains of the demolished Hinterkaifeck house in 1925. Upon being asked why he was there, Schlittenbauer stated that the perpetrator's attempt to bury the family's remains in the barn had been hindered by the frozen ground. Why the fuck would he say that? Right. Out of nowhere. It's like, why are you here? Yeah, it's crazy how they couldn't bury the bodies because the ground was frozen. Yeah. Uh, that's not what I asked, but okay. Yeah. Killer. Listen. Yeah. Sometimes you ever been, you play golf before. Sometimes the ground's too hard to put a tee in. Imagine trying to dig and bury those bodies. Yeah. When you can't even get like a fucking peg into the ground. I know, dude. That's why you gotta do it in the summer. But if yeah. someone asks, hey, why are you here where all these people were murdered? And you go, real nuts how they couldn't bury them because the ground was frozen. That's, well, did they that's even a ask, non sequitur. They did, didn't, did they even ask the murder part? They're like, hey, what are you doing here watching this demolition? Crazy how they couldn't bury the bodies because they were <laughs> murdered. Because uh, uh, the ground was frozen, those murdered that's people. That's how it went. That's yeah. how it says it in the files. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like the classic like lying and giving. Like You, you get it's nervous like and jinx. give way too much information. It's like the jinx. It's yeah. like, of course it killed them. Yeah. Killed them all. Like, uh, hot mic'd it. Uh, upon being asked, oh no, I, sorry. This was seen as evidence that Schlittenbauer had intimate knowledge of the conditions of the ground at the time of the murders, although being a neighbor and familiar with the local land, he may have been making an educated guess unprompted. Uh, another speculation was that Schlittenbauer murdered the family after Victoria demanded financial support for young Joseph. Before his death in 1941, Schlittenbauer conducted and won several civil claims for slander against persons who described him as the murderer of Hinter Kaifek, because there wasn't enough to pin him. Right. Not enough to pin him, but... Wait, what year was his court case? His 41. court case, uh, his death was 41, so he won cases between 1922 and 1941. Oh, wow. So yeah. he was in court, like, during the war. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's bigger problems going on. Right. Here's a couple other dumb ones. It's definitely Schlittenbauer in my mind. But uh, at, this, at this point, the court, 41, is like, hey, buddy, we're all German. We're all Nazis. It's, it's, we're all assholes now at this point. <laughs> yeah. So. Come on. It's fine. Yeah. Let's just drop it. Did you kill him? Right, yeah. Whatever. Uh, the Gump brothers in 1951, prosecutor Andreas Pop investigated brothers Adolf and Anton Gump in relation to the murders at Hinterkaifeck. Their sister claimed on her deathbed that Adolf and Anton had committed the murders. As a result, Anton Gump was remanded to the police, and Adolf had already died in 1944, but they were like, no, these guys didn't do it. Why, so, why did, what was the evidence that they didn't do it? Uh, there was no evidence they did it except for their sister saying they did it. Okay. Shit like that happened constantly with right. these murders. Um, <laughs> not even in town, but your yeah. fucking family member has a problem with like, you. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, there was like it. another one. The the They don't even say the last name of this family, but Carl S. and Andreas S. Uh, someone was saying that uh, they lost their pen knife and there was a pen knife found at the scene of the crime. So they're like, oh, it could have been them. Yep, they lost a pen yep. knife. And then the, the maid's... The former maid was like, there's pen knives all over that place. It's right. a fucking farm. It's a fucking pen knife um, factory over there. Nothing but pen knives. On a farm. You ever been to a fucking German farm before? It's full of pen knives. Yeah. Another one was there's just blades to cut shit. Um, yeah. A farm is full of murder weapons. Is that, it's like that scene in uh, Twister where they run into the barn to take cover and look around. And it's just the whole wall is just like covered in blades. I only take place in barns during any type of uh, tornado. Any type of crazy weather. Yeah. Yeah. So, like hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. Always a barn. You find a lot of barns in Orlando to take mm-hmm. cover in during hurricanes? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You always go under the overpass if you need to during the, ter- during the tornado. Like in the Superman? Nader. The tornado. Yeah. You go under mm-hmm. the overpass. It's the move. Or go into a culvert. You so need to be in a ditch. ditch. Yeah. yeah get on. No, the overpass is kind of bad because it collapses on you. Oh, yeah, not an no. overpass. The ditch. The, you need to get in the, a ditch. Yeah, the, the thingy. The, no, you go in a bathtub. That you go in a bathtub. You go in a bathtub. Yeah, I guess you have a bathtub available you know on the side of the road. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I, I don't drive with a bathtub, unfortunately. Damn. There's another one that's really stupid that I'm not even going to go into now that I'm rereading it because it's like, this guy in jail said that this person had a lot of money and knew that he was fucking his daughter, and he was like, we should kill him and take all their money. But then he, the guy didn't respond, so the guy just never mentioned it again. They just didn't get a reply. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Not really worth looking into, I guess. Uh, the Beekler brothers and George Siegel, however, are pretty interesting. So the former, the former maid, uh, Kresnes Rieger, worked from November 1920 to about September 1921. She's the one that quit because the house was haunted. Mm-hmm. Uh, she suspected the brothers Anton and Carl Beekler to have committed the murders. Anton Beekler had helped with the potato harvest at the Hinterkaifeck farm and therefore knew the premises. Rieger said Beekler talked to her often about the Grubar and Gabriel family. Anton reportedly suggested that the family ought to be dead. The maid also emphasized in her interrogation that the farm dog who barked at everyone never barked at Anton. In addition, she reported speaking with the stranger through her window at night. And that stranger, uh, the maid believed it was Carl Beekler, the brother of Anton Beekler. She thought that Anton and Carl Beekler could have committed the murder together with George Siegel, who had worked at the Hinterkaifeck and knew of the family fortune. Supposedly, Siegel had broken into the home in November 1920 and had stolen a number of items, though he denied it. He did state that he had carved the handle of the murder weapon when he was working at Hinterkaifeck and knew that the tool would have been kept in the barn passage. So post-murder, were things missing? Yeah, the, the murder weapon was. No, did they take like the money and shit money. with jewelry gone? Oh, they, they never mentioned that. They even mentioned shit. Missing. Seems relevant. Yeah, yeah, they never mention it. They mentioned food being made in the house. So yeah, they made uh, some fucking toast or whatever. The whole fireplace smelled. Like whole shit. town might have yeah. stolen the money. They knew it was a fucking incest house. Yeah, they were like, you know what? Fuck this place, dude. What if the whole town just conspired to murder? It was an inside family? job. Well, didn't we do a story about someone? Like, wasn't there a murder in a town where the entire town killed the guy and like everyone was just like, we all know who did I it. I think that's just the plot that Hot Fuzz. That is the. That is the plot of Hot Fuzz, but there's also, like, in American history, there's this bad, big bad dude. I think he's in, like, Kansas. He just bullies people around, and then finally someone just, like, he does something to somebody, and everyone's like, that's enough. And they all just shoot him together, yeah. and they, they go to investigate, and they're like, I don't oh, know what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Could have been anybody. Could have been fucking anybody. Yeah. Yeah, like, this guy's fucking his daughter, and they're rich, and we hate them. Yeah, there's a couple more. Like the toddler seems like a lot. There's a couple more insane ones where, like, someone's like, oh, the devil did it, and stuff like that. But wow. here's what I think happened. So, uh, Lorenz Schlittenbauer, he's the lover, obviously, of okay. Victoria. The people are hearing noises up in the attic. Mm-hmm. Either that's one of two things happening. Either that's the incest room or that's the room where the family lets, and I think this is what really happened, Lor- they let Lorenz and Victoria have time together up there because mm-hmm. she's stuck there anyway. Right. They know he's at least taking care of her in some form or fashion, and- they let that happen, but it's unbeknownst to the fucking maid. Okay. The maid's probably hearing the shit going on up Why there. tell the maid? Right. Why it's tell not, the maid? There's not not, it's, not, it's not the maid's problem. You're the maid. Yeah, yeah like, like, you're you know, not family. You, you don't need to, need to know this. Things. You're not it's just family. good old consensual fucking. It's widow, widower, boning right. that's going on up there. That's, that probably leads to the conception of the son, Yosef. There's probably an argument about who the hey, father is. who the father is. One... Is it me or your dad? Is it me or your dad? That's a great he probably idea. already hates her dad, yeah. knowing the history behind it. And he also was the, the dad. Like, like what? What, what else are they going to do? It's his farm. What are they going to? What are they like? What is going on? Yeah, the dad's like, yeah, I bang my daughter. You can bang her too. Uh, well, or to get the scent off him for continuing to bang his yeah, daughter. Maybe. It's like, I oh mean, no, she's ba- she's banging that guy. Like. But either way, I have, I have no nostalgia for the past. Either way, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I, I was born in the wrong decade. It's like, which uh, one are you talking about? There's uh, only uh, like two you possibly yeah, could want to be born. If you ever do time right, travel, yeah. you never go back. Anyone who says they're born in the wrong decade and that decade is pre war, like pre World War II, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. And honestly, they're really wrong if it's before 19. I mean, I guess. Unless if, they're just a white Anglo dude. I guess, they're yeah, wrong I guess about almost wanna, every I guess decade. if you want to be white and go to a Beatles concert, that's fine. Dude, but. yeah. Unless you're like just a super waspy white dude and you want to go to like 1950. Yeah. And like just have some better ideas. Also, and anyone smoke now. Smoke indoors. Yeah, smoke anyone indoors. Now that that's went the back only way. The only reason I would go back in time is to smoke indoors. You can do that in Florida right now. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm creating a time traveling machine and going back to the 50s. There are cigar lounges you can go do that in. Here I don't today, want a cigar. Right now, well, well, he wants he wants a Lucky Strike unfiltered. Yeah, that's fair. In American a bar. spirit. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, so he would have been the only person that, like, it's the only thing that makes sense. They had to have seen someone they trusted to be lured out to the barn. The luring thing is, is yeah. interesting. They can't hear shit from inside the house. Yeah. There's also, clearly he has a key to the place. There was a missing key beforehand. Um, the person obviously had, had, had like operational awareness of the house if they were able to tend to the farm too. Seems like so, the only person well, Okay, here's the, the thing though. Why tend to the farm? To buy yourself time? Maybe to make it seem like someone lives and there. And did his kids, wouldn't his kids have been aware that he was gone for like the days prior to him being like, hey, go check on these people. Actually, they don't talk about his whereabouts before the murders. Right. So, I mean, one was his stepson, one was his kid. Because he meant, was there the whole, presumably the whole time. Yeah, then he would have had to come back and like, hey, go check out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been real sus. That's a like, pretty big hole in the plot. Yeah, that is honest. pretty big. Maybe he's just doing a common courtesy for the dead people. Just be like, I guess I'll just pick up the slack since you guys aren't going to be able to farm. I, yeah. Either way, I think it's someone that they, the family would have had to have been familiar with. Like, very familiar with right. in order to be lured out there. Unless, you know, the devil did it, in which mm. case. Well, let's not rule out aliens. Aliens could have done it. Here's what I don't understand. Why didn't people look? Well, maybe they had an alibi, I guess, but really can't take the coffee guys off the off the table. You can't take anyone off the table, but you can't put anyone on it either. Right. There's no evidence enough to get It's a perfect crime, really. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they could have figured it out, you know, now. But Now would have been easy. Yeah, but back then, I mean, it's the middle of fucking nowhere. So the really mysterious parts here, how did someone get, how did someone lure four people out to this barn without making much of a noise? And it was one at a time. And it was one so at a time. I originally, it has I, to be someone they know. I originally, uh, I thought that you were saying it was like, they got all four to come out. You it's, know I mean? it's the Hansel and Gretel witch piece of candy. They just kept dropping candy drops. Yep. yep. Ooh, yep. candy. Into Ooh, the barn. Candy. Yeah. <laughs> how else? Yep. Yeah. I mean, what if it was really good candy, too? Like, just gumdrops. They've right. never seen shit like what that. It's a time there. traveler with Skittles. They don't know what this thing is. What if it was Nic- Nicholas Cage did it? Could have. Could have done it. Can't out, can't, I mean, we can't rule him out of this. Um, but, yeah. No, so that's the story, at least. Uh, they did do a bunch of students in, I want to say, like, the 90s did a, they reopened the case to try and, like, follow the evidence and, like, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of cut up, like, the, the things they did wrong. And they actually narrowed it. They were able to eliminate every single person they investigated except for one person. And they won't reveal who that is because they don't want to they don't want to offend the descendants of that person. Because they can't prove that they're guilty. What? What? Yep. Actually happened. They will not reveal who they believe it is. So it's like in an envelope just, somewhere? Yeah. They, it's, but they didn't do it. The descendants didn't do anything. No. No. no okay, they actually, don't. no, that makes sense. I, I, I ch- totally changed my mind because here's why. Uh, they have no actual proof. That the person did it. It's all theory. Who cares? Do you, do, are you tied emotionally to your great grandfather? Well, not. it's probably the grandfather in the nineties. Be grandfather. Mm, not in the twenties. Yeah, depending on. Well, it depends great, on their age. It depends my on their great grandfather um, was a piece of shit. Okay, yeah, I guess I would have been not been emotionally tied to a great grandfather. But maybe but someone else it, from the other side. If it was a grandfather, I'd be pissed. Well, actually, that whole clan's dead. So who's coming after you? You know, like either way. Um, yeah, they did that study, though. I thought that was pretty funny. They were like, we're not going to say. Yeah, it's just one of the know. biggest biggest mysteries in our country. Why do it then? That's I'll what I don't never care. tell. Just to be like, oh, they did stuff wrong. And if we had the technology today, we probably would have called it this guy. <laughs> that's kind of presumptuous. Yeah, that's pretty dumb. Yeah. Um, real quick, too, just as a side note, I was going to do a story about the other Diet Law of Pass type incident yeah. today. I didn't realize this. That happened in 1990, so I wasn't gonna do it. It would have been too recent. I, anyway. I think no. So the 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 two things I was gonna the do. The rule I like is 30 years. So it would have been just in. Yeah. Okay, 30 years is fine. I won't. I I well, still wouldn't want to do it. We've it was done something more recent than that. What we do? Enron. Oh, Enron. Actually, you know, ask historians the Reddit sub, uh, the Reddit uh, subreddit or whatever. That's like really good, and you get answers from like real historians. Yeah, it's, sort of shit. it's an awesome. They subreddit. they have a twenty year rule actually. That's cool. So nine eleven just came into play this year, essentially. Oh god. Yeah. Must be a fun week on ask historians. Yeah, right. Um, um, but yeah. twenty years fine. I actually think if they do twenty, I think twenty is fine with us. We so. should just say before two thousand. That's probably the I agree, not this century. Not this century, yeah. Actually, Um, we also did a fucking story from 2020. Oh, yeah. Which one? We survived history. Oh, that's a fucking whatever one. Come on. 
We get a freebie every now we, and then. Yeah, we all fucking had barely... We didn't really have time. I was living like, with another family. people didn't have internet. I lost like, my power yeah. for like, so, or not my power, my water for several days. Um, you funny, were a literal refugee. I was here. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I did, a, a thing just came out though on the dial-off pass incident. I do want to have an update for anyone that listened to that episode. They're blaming it on slate or slab avalanches. Okay. That explains like nothing. One part. Of like sixteen weird things that are around that case. Yeah, that explains no radiation. Were... That explains none of the uh, the what do you call it? The violation of the bodies or anything yeah, like tents that. Tents being ripped from the outside. Yeah, like right. It just or explains from the inside. Or yeah, from the inside, inside I mean. out. Yeah, people it, it, being found in it, trees like it, ten feet up. The only thing it expl- well, that ex- it explains, I think. Sure, but none of the avalanche other- put you in a tree, maybe. But uh, I mean, maybe like if they heard the avalanche coming and they cut their way out and they jumped up into the trees or, you know, got flung up or oh shit. You just explained a lot of it to be yeah. honest. Yeah. But nuclear radiation right. and tongues being, and let's say the contact biting of the tongue and you know, Oh, like you're actually explaining up. a lot more now. Actually, maybe it was a slab. Avalanche, yeah. I, I think know. you just, explained. Yep. yeah. You, yeah. No, but the yeah, nuclear sounds, radiation does not explain. That also is not explain. It was radioactive so yetis. Everyone knows that they started the avalanche. Yeah. So yeah. They didn't start the fire. Uh, interesting one though. I think it's called the, Kamar Dubon incident. Everyone just kept like bleeding from the eyes and foaming at the mouth and dropping dead. And one person survived it. It was like a trek of like six or seven people. Okay. Uh, right around the time though, that they were definitely testing. Uh, what is it? I coop might know the pronunciation of this. Was it Novichok? Uh, the, the nerve agent that they've been killing diplomats with in Russia. Oh, tight. Yeah. Tight, which tight, tight. does that. So it, and it's a heavy, Gas, yeah. so it lays dormant on the ground until people are like, oh, I'm camping. Yeah, and kick oh, it Oh shit, up. I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're never gonna have a shortage of either German or Russian stories. Yeah, for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. especially during Halloween Horror Month. Yeah, no, it's so, real easy. I just literally had to look in the same era as you. Yeah, to find an equally gruesome and weird murder. And I'm not ruling out Peter Curtin. I, you know what? I Why am, not? I am because that person successfully murdered six people. Peter right. Curtin didn't have that kind of percentage. And actually, I will rule him out because he was very, you know, transparent about the people he murdered. And he would correct people in court. He admitted to killing a swan when no one asked about yep, it. Right. Nobody asked yeah. about that swan. Yeah, I killed that swan. He's like, I also beheaded a swan. I'm like, guy, come on. Like, we don't yeah. care. Leave the animal murder. So uh, what would you guys learn? Today? Who's Hitler? Uh, well, you know, it was Germany during 1920, so I think the Hitler of this story is Hitler. Hitler yep. is the yeah. Hitler. Hitler yeah. is the Hitler of this story, all yes. things considered. For sure. Uh, He's on his rise to power at this point now, yes? No? No, they weren't. So he, they were in 22. Is he in jail? Is he in prison? He, he might have been, like been writing Mein Kampf, which still makes him Hitler. That actually makes him exceptionally Hitler yeah. in this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess if we want to go more, you know, not so macro Hitler and go mi- more micro Hitler, um... I think it's the dad. That's definitely the dad's the Hitler of this story. Dan, yeah, because he causes all the issues, really. Yeah, even if it is this Schlitterbahn character. <laughs> Schlitterbahn, Schlittenbauer? No, Schlitterbahn. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure they named the uh, the yeah. water park after him. Yeah. Schlitterbahn Texas. has also destroyed a child's head. So. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked that's it's accurate gr- actually <laughs> it's i wish that was i wish that happened in the 90s because the story around that is fucking it's insane in, it's absolutely insane when was that was like 10 years ago <laughs> if that six years ago. yeah oh my god dude it's, the amount it's, of honestly it's a horrifying story. the amount of negligence that went into that happening is yep. dumbfounding i'm there not is, really stoked on ever going to a water park again fuck that dude yeah like, well, that's the one irrational fear i have is like water parks or roller coasters I will go on them, and I, I do enjoy them, but especially when it's in the dark and it's inside, I have this irrational fear that I will get beheaded. By yeah. The ro- like especially like Space Mountain. Space Mountain. Oh, well, everything seems very close to you on Space yes. Mountain. Yeah. So, and I know they, you know, compute for people much taller than me. I'm only six feet tall. I'm sure there's people that are on that ride that are like six eight, <laughs> or they don't. And yeah, you just never hear about those people because Disney covers up, dude. I duck all the time. Yeah. Okay. You're not, uh, your family's not solving that Disney murder. No, uh, mm-hmm. Disney, no one dies at Disney. I don't know if you know. Yeah, that. that's that family who had Gate, that two year old Gator boy. Gator. Yeah. No, that, that, that was, was on the family. <laughs> that's on the family. That was yeah, on the family. Let's go swim in this Florida pond with our toddler at, at sunset. Night. 
in mating season. Yeah. Like, there's no. signs everywhere that are like, Alligators need to be stopped. Well, if you're an LSU Tiger, it's pretty easy to do. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so that's it for this week. Uh, oh, well, actually, what I learned, I was going to say, oh. is, uh, of course, you're not solving a murder in the 20s. Yeah. Nope. And those kids that went and tried to do it in the 90s and think they got who it was, fuck you. Yeah, those, are, those kids are dicks. They're assholes. We're not going to tell you. Yeah. I don't think they did anything. I, they just, That's they a great just, way to do a school presentation. We figured out the murder. Like, you're a criminology <laughs> student. We figured out the murderer, but it wouldn't be appropriate to tell you. They probably did, like, a suspect X, suspect Y yeah. kind of thing, where it was, like, they couldn't name them. But that, they, Yeah. Um, either way, hey, guys, check out our uh, website, softcorehistory.com, if you want Get merch. merch. We're going to uh, load up and... Yeah, we got some new new designs on the way. Dan's got some stuff spinning up right now. Uh, is we the, got the, the two Irish coming up? Two Irish to die shirt coming. We're, we're working. We're working on that. We got to talk offline about some yeah future shirts. Too. We want to do some holiday sure. stuff real quick. But we we want stuff available for you to purchase for the holidays. Yeah. Maybe buy for a family member who listens to the podcast. Maybe yeah. yourself. Treat maybe like yourself. a maybe like a Thanksgiving shirt where the pilgrims treating the Indian like a food delivery driver, <laughs> and uh, you know, <coughs> they're just like, all right, leave. No tip. Just something wildly offensive. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool. yeah glad we're going to do that one. Um, we're maybe, not. Maybe yeah, we're we'll not. launch our, our mascot softy. <laughs> it's a stupid softy. shirt. Perhaps. We're not talking about softy. I fucking hate that dude. Why do you hate softy? Softy's an asshole. Well, that's just like your opinion. He's pretty nice to me and Rob. Yeah, it's more, yeah. It's, uh, what you're, you're just being subjective, I think. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave a five star review <laughs> on the podcast on Apple iTunes, whatever it's called. I don't know. Podcast. Whatever. App. Thing. You know what to do at this point. Just review us. Leave a review. Take your dad's phone and subscribe and review on that. Ooh, please do that with your dad's phone. Go ahead phone. and listen to Iconoblast. Uh, they're about to do a 10 minute segment on this as well. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you got a lot more content for it now, though. Uh, oh wait, no, you already did it. My bad. Uh, anyway, sorry, Coop. Uh, for, Coop, thanks for uh, switching board. Please do listen to Account of Blast as well. Uh, for Dan Regester, subscribe to Drinking Bros History on the YouTube. Yes, please do that. Uh, for Dan Regester and Rob Fox, I'm Jake Goldman, and you just got soft served. <laughs>